Teddy in California, help me. <laughs> You're hey, live with our going, guys? I, hey. Did you hear the last call? I, I wish I did it. I wish I did. <laughs> uh, but I did. I, you know, the funny thing is, is, is we get mail uh, from people saying, oh, well, you know, you only pick Christians who don't know what they're talking about to have on the show. And yet, we're just taking the people who call. Uh, Teddy, it, yeah, it, I mean, it says here that you're a believer, and I'm glad that you called. Well, you know, this is an interesting thing because there needs to be a distinction made here. I wouldn't say I'm a believer in a Christian Judeo God. Okay. Uh, I actually think that conception of God is absurd uh, in the sense that it's contradictory, and I'll explain why. I want to offer a new view. Um, okay. New to, in the sense of this discussion, it's not a view that I invented. It's very old, actually. It comes from Avicenna, philosopher. Uh, back in the BC era, but essentially it goes something like this: Is where this the prime were, mover argument? Ex okay, <laughs> man, yeah. I don't even need to explain it. Exactly, yeah. I want to know your thoughts on that. Okay, um, I'm actually gonna. I want you to defer back and, and explain it just a little bit. That way, the people who are watching can follow along. Would you do that? So it pretty much goes something like this: where there are things that exist in the temporal order, and these things are not necessary beings in the sense that they didn't have to exist. You know, my parents didn't have to conceive me. It could have gone another way. And so if we group all of these possible things in themselves, all the way back, you know, before humans were created, you know, going to the Big Bang, we group that into a set, which is in itself controversial, whether or not you can group infinity into a set. But let's say you can. Then there has to be something that could not help but exist. Omnipotent, omnipowerful, but you know, everything in the universe combined into one, yet it has no real attributes. And like you're saying, it's an unmoved mover. It pretty much was the initial cause. It sparked everything and kind of disappeared from our everyday lives. Okay. Um, so there's no point in grounding morality in some type of Judeo God, unless, of course, you define the good as you know, a teleological sense, which is not going to help us yeah, prevent that, something like murder. Yeah, it, yeah. it just goes um, circular. Um, yeah, I, I would like to point out that, like, omnipotent is an attribute, right? So why would this thing that does not have attributes also be omnipotent and omnipresent? It has to have essentially... Every, it can't have any physical attributes. It's, it's timeless. It doesn't have, like, you know, brown hair or anything like that. Omnipotent is more of a, a, a sense of where it's the cause of everything, or at least the initial cause, sure. which set everything else into motion. So, um, And the, where do you find the circular uh, aspect, though? Oh, uh, well, when you're talking about morality, but I think this... Piece, this prime mover piece is way more interesting. Yeah. Um, you know, the, the argument against omnipotence, and, and then we're going to get to the core of this, but just really quickly to nip that in the bud, did you ever hear the whole, can God make a boulder so large he cannot move it? No, I haven't. I haven't heard that. No, I, I prefer the, can God create a burrito so spicy he cannot eat it? <laughs> um, well, no, because then the level of spice would have to precede him. Well, and well, so, and so, then there so, have to be something before that God. Go. Well, if he can't, then that means he's not all powerful, right? Well, then that all that just means that there's something that precedes that, which created that level of spice. And you it couldn't, it couldn't be the prime mover. If there can only be one, so let's say you know there's <laughs> there's several major uh, figures here. One of them can't eat the spice. If there is a god that cannot eat this spice, then that level of spice could not have been created by this god. And the, the, it's kind of weird that you're even saying that a god could eat something, because I thought we said that uh, so I, there were no I, attributes here. Well, I, would, I would be remiss if I didn't say he who controls the spice controls the universe. Um, but that said, <laughs> <laughs> Teddy, um, the time to believe in something is when there's evidence that points towards it. 
Um, so when you're bringing up this argument for a prime mover, uh, there are so many classic ways that it breaks down. Uh, do, you, do you hear the the story of um, you know, turtles the whole way down? Yeah, infinite turtles. Right. Yep. Oh yeah, turtle and, with a jetpack. Well, and 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 the reason that is is because um, uh, somebody had had said I, I don't know if the story was made up. Where but, does that come from? By yeah, where does it come from? I, so the way it was explained to me is there was a Q and A and somebody said uh, that they believe that the Earth lies on the back of a giant turtle. And then uh, okay, well, what's under the turtle? What's the turtle standing on? Well, another turtle. Okay, what are they standing on? Well, it's it's turtles the whole way down. That's why you have to group the infinite turtles into a set, which gets controversial. I well, know. so so here's the thing: you get this. This is called an infinite regress. Right? Who created the creator? And then who created that? Um, it doesn't lend itself to anything usable. All it does is um, the only way that you can ground that is if you give it special permission. If you say everything was created except this one thing, it has a special rule. And the special rule is it doesn't have to follow the rules, man. Um, <laughs> but that, that's not how the, any of this works, Teddy. It's just not. What do you, what, what's this? What are you saying when, when you say that's not how this works? Our practical lives, our present lives, or the universe? Oh, our understanding of the universe, our, our, the, the way that we determine things about the universe. If you wanted to determine anything going on in your life, if you wanted to learn about the world around you, you do so by observation and by studying and by, by using methodology that leads us to right, definitive so you're results. An you're an empiricist. I'm an idealist. Well, I, I think I'm pretty... Uh, anyway... <laughs> Anyway, I mean, I think my question yeah. apart from that is, all right, so if we were to grant you that maybe there was this initial cause thing that didn't have attributes and isn't connected to any of the religions that currently exist and aren't going to impact our day to day lives, why do we care? Why believe in that thing at all? Because it frees us from the fetters that popular religion has chained us in. So does believe in there's um, no but I wanna, not I believing there's a God at all. On you, though. I understand there. Are, this is a controversial argument. I think it's a really cool argument. That's why I wanted to bring it up. But let's. I want to flip this back on you. How else would you explain uh, the existence of thing of potential things in themselves, or the existence of temporal things? You know. Are you aware of the are argument? You, are you fine with the infinite regress? Are you or are you aware of the argument from incredulity? Not by name, but perhaps sure. by, by some other... What, what is it? Uh, so, so it's, I can't explain it, you can't explain it, therefore what I'm saying is true. Okay, that, that, that right. makes me... Uh, I'm, I'm not too confident in... Exactly. In that. I, that we're, okay. we're, we feel good about saying I don't know to things that we don't know. We don't try to give it an answer because it makes us uncomfortable. In fact, that uncomfortability, I think, has a large amount to do with why we explore this. Right. It's an amazing thing. There's so little we know about the world around us. And the more we get to learn, the more we we grow as a species and, and the better we can make the world for the next generations. I mean, that feeling of uncomfortability needs to be what pushes us forwards. But when we say, you know, I don't know, therefore I need to go with the answer that, you know, is is being presented that doesn't give you permission to let that answer go without questioning because you might be blinding yourself to what it actually is, what the real answer could be. You're asking well, a question, you well, what's your we explanation? We, we, we might not know the answer, so and, and at that, know, I'd, uh, I'd rather at least try to strive for the best understanding. And, and in doing so? It seems to me, like, given given... The, you know, I don't want to just throw terms out there, but given the principle of sufficient reason, you know, which I'm using to guide this argument, um, there needs to be an initial cause for something. The problem is if we don't have an initial cause or something grounding all of our potential things, then we have no reason to actually believe any any of this exists. Okay. I know that's sure. a spooky thing to say. No, I, I, it's, it, it's, it's, it, no, it's not true. It's an unfounded assertion. It's a, you're going to walk right into a precept uh, trap with that logic. I, ex yeah, <laughs> we, we're here to save you, Teddy. It's going to be okay. Yeah, we're good. Um, go ahead. I, I'm, 
I don't know. I'm just, I'm again, I'm just kind of curious because you say, you say the reason that you believe this and the reason people should believe this is that it frees us from the fetters of the religions that claim they know more than that. But my counter to that would be so would not believing in any God at all. And that's actually giving them less ammunition than your argument, which is there was a God or a creator or whatever this prime mover was. Uh, you're already granting them that, and they're going to take that and run with it. So if your goal... It's, God is a weird term for that. It's it's a God-like figure. Okay, and, well, okay, that's fair. Uh, and in terms initial of, cause. And in terms of freeing, you know, being free from organized religion, that's more of just uh, what, what I see as a friendly consequence of this, of this position. Um, the reason, you know, I'm, I'm not a dead believer in this argument. I think it's cool. And I think that it's much different than these sort of theist type discussions um, that most people have, where it's either a Judeo Christian God or some type of organized God, or there's no God at all. And all I'm trying to show is that it, it, it's not as black and white. And, you know, you can be spiritual and not believe in that type of being. Absolutely. You, yeah, I agree. You can be quote unquote spiritual and not believe in any being at all. You can also be super sure. into woo, right? You know, crystals and and chakras and auras and I mean, aren't we all into crystals? I mean, I mean, obviously, <laughs> obviously. Um, <laughs> so I think also though, like the the argument about uh, needing an initial cause because. Uh, by the principle of sufficient reason, we need a cause in order to exist and all of this. Uh, that is suggesting that time works the way we think it works and works consistently uh, in other uh, it actually dimensions. Doesn't. It actually doesn't because there's a lot of room in this argument to put in something like Kantian spatiotemporal intuitions okay. um, where so time is very human-centric. Okay, hold on. I'm not convinced time actually exists yet. Okay, wow. So um, wait, you're not convinced time exists, but you're convinced this God it, prime I'm not mover convinced exists? Time exists outside of human perception. Why do you think that time doesn't exist, but this prime mover does? I mean, if that was true, then my food wouldn't go bad in the fridge. Sure. I'd close, sure. I'd close the door, walk away, and it'd be just as good when I opened it the next time. Not necessarily. That now we're getting into causes. Um, so, <laughs> sorry, go ahead. I'm just, I'm, I'm, it's fascinating to me that you would, you, you're, you're interacting with the concept of time every day, whether or not it exists as a platonic ideal, which I agree it doesn't. It, it is a thing that works in the world and we interact with it and we all, we all, it's, it's here. We, we study it. We measure it, right? So. For sure. For sure. We study and we measure it and we know for a fact, you know, we, we use GPS. We know for a fact that time is never constant that time changes based on our perception. It's relative. Well, and there's something weird about that, right? Well, there's I, something weird about that. And so I'm trying to figure out how that could be the case where gravity warps time. Why where, do you... Oh, okay. Uh, yes, where, it's, it's weird. Space-time is really trippy. But I don't understand where that, where that leads you to an initial cause. Why does the, the existence of some prime mover mean that gravity fluctuates? So if there you're, you're, is no initial cause, then how do you explain anything? That's you're doing it again. You don't know. You don't know. Therefore, what I'm saying is true. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just asking you to explain to me if there is no initial cause. Don't know of anything. Don't know. Okay, uh -huh. that's fine. And then if you lack that grounding, then how um, can you? Are, are you okay with that? Here's the, part, here's the part that I want to get into. Here's okay. the part that I want to get into. Um, so, Teddy, can you demonstrate to me that we need to have something grounded in an abstract outside of time and space in order to understand it? Right? I don't, I don't even need to understand how my car works. I can get it, sure. I can get in it and drive it here and not understand how the engine works. That's because someone else works. understands how it works, and that's because someone else understands how to build it. So okay. I don't really like that uh, metaphor. But... Okay. Um, there, there are things that we study in nature that you yeah, know, no, have I properties. I understand what you're asking. Okay. So you, we talked about turtles all the way down, right? Mm -hmm. You, 
agree that there was a cause for, let's say, your existence. Yes, my, you know, when... Okay, and there was a cause for your parents' existence, and it goes down and down and down for infinite turtles. These no. are all things that did no. no, no, no. No, at some point Why? you get to abiogenesis. What does that mean? Abiogenesis is the beginning of life. Okay, but I'm talking about... There, there, there was no life before, before life began, right? There was, a, there, there was a time when there was no life, and then, and then there was a time where there was life. Okay, but I'm not just talking about... I'm talking about everything in the universe. I was yeah. just starting with, with your life as a starting point. But. Sure, I got it. And you're getting back to the, in, the, the argument from incredulity, I think. Or, or are you taking me somewhere else? Because I'm asking you, you're saying it needs to be grounded in this, or what? Or we can't... What? I'm saying What's this grounding you're talking about? we learn about the world is by reason. And reason demands a cause for something. No, then, it doesn't. You don't think so? No, it's a method. It is a it's a method of understanding the world. Absolutely, yeah, it, it, it's 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 the yes. And so when you talk about your sandwich going bad in the fridge, mm -hmm. what is the reason for that? Why did it go bad in the fridge? Well, Was that, there mold? Well, we would need to investigate it, right? But there's a cause, right? It just it just didn't randomly well, happen. So there's a reason for it going bad. Sure. Would you immediately say that gnomes went in and put a curse on it for it to rot? No, that's not. No, that's ridiculous. No. I agree, Teddy. I agree, which is why you we need to withhold our judgment until we've investigated it. So tell me how you there investigated you outside of the universe that we're in. And then please, please be the person who tells me why I need to ground my beliefs in a supernatural thing outside of the universe. Please, because I still don't understand that. I'm not telling you that you have to do that. I'm saying if you believe that reason requires an explanation for the for, for things... I just told you, I, I told you that's not, that's not the case. So either you can... I think continue. you're wrong about that. Okay, well, you can continue to build a straw man if you'd like. Uh, I don't need to be on this call while you do it because you'll just be talking to the straw man. Or you can talk to me. Well, what do you want to know? I want to know about this grounding. Right, and I'm trying to explain that by showing that I'm using reason here to structure my argument. Okay. The idea, the conception of reason being that reason demands an explanation for something. Okay. When the sandwich goes bad, there's a reason the sandwich went bad. A sufficient reason would be something which, you know, it's not gnomes coming in. Well, We're talking about... Wouldn't gnomes be equally sufficient, Teddy? Why? If Why? you presuppose them, then yeah. they're clearly the best answer. I'm not presupposing them. I'm, I'm, going, I'm going down the argument here. How am I presupposing notes? Well, you're not, but say a hypothetical... Because any, just because I say there's a cause, that means that anything could cause it? Well, no, but you're not giving us ways exactly. to determine whether or not that cause is, is viable or valid. So why, why, what would stop us from pre, uh, proposing a different cause and then also not... You don't have to get into the specifics. It's just the, it's just the, the, the idea that there are causes. Causes are important for explaining. I right? agree. Okay. Now. Yay! We're on the same page. Okay, Teddy. We're on the same page. We, we agree that causes are important. Um, just, just really quickly, I want to throw this out there. Oh, give me just a second, Teddy. We got two open lines. Um, so if you are a believer, now's the time to call in. 512-686-0279. Uh, um, go ahead, Teddy. Thank you for being patient there. For sure. Um, so causes, we like causes. They help us understand things. Uh, um, causes don't help us understand things any more than effects do inherently. It's the process of observing well, cause them. Cause and effect are, the, for, for my, I'm talking causality. is something that we accept is present in, this, in, the, in the universe. And there is a reason why A goes to B or why the sandwich goes back. We agree, right? right? It's not just random gnomes type deal. I don't want you to no. throw out gnomes until you can... Never mind. 
Never mind. Um, Teddy, the reason I brought up gnomes is because I think that that is a sufficient cause, and I'm trying why? to use that. Why, though? Why is an omnipotent God sufficient to create because a universe? That, that is the best explanation. And gnomes. You're, you're using inference the best explanation to say that gnomes are not the cause of the sandwich. All of, given the restrictions on the way we perceive the world, that we are temporal beings, we don't live very long, we can't see very far. Yeah. The best we can do to understand these very fundamental things of the universe is develop is sufficient technology. Well, sure, so. but people have been talking about this stuff for thousands of years, even before technology existed. I agree, but they uh, also talked about where technology. thunder came from. And when they didn't have any explanation for where thunder and lightning came from, they made up a god, which was the best explanation because they didn't know. And then we found out where thunder sure. and lightning came sure. from. So why is, how is that any different than saying we don't know where the universe came from? So God. Well, at least we, at least we were wondering about where God came from and we thought it was thunder. Why? Because, you know, we, we didn't have a tight enough conception of, of science at that point. Right. But, but just, but just the, but just the act of, of using reason to say, you know what, there must be a cause for thunder. We are primitive beings. For all we know, our thoughts could be God's talking, but we know there's a cause. And that's important because ultimately, when that technology came around, we used the same method of thinking to explain thunder, except now we have better technology to come up with a more precise. Well, not more precise, just completely different explanation. Sense? But okay, so yeah, we use the process of reason to get us from God to science. In, in thunder this is related another, questions the, the idea of, of god being a placeholder for things we can't understand that's what you're propositioning though like you're, yes, that's what you're that's saying what I, yes okay so yes. you're you're saying that this initial cause is a placeholder until we figure out what it actually happened sure, absolutely okay. and my whole point was just so that reason gets us there and uh, no my okay so it sounds like you defined god in this whatever the beginning of the universe was. Does yes. does this thing exist? You talked so about set exist? theory. Yes. It necessarily exists. It couldn't help but exist. The only thing. Okay. Why do you give something special permission like that? Because the argument requires me to do that. Okay. I think you should find a better argument. The right answer I'd is... Love one. I'd love one. Exactly. Here it is. Ready? I don't know. Okay, but that's that's a cop-out, though. No, no it's, it's not. not. It is the most intellectually honest thing you can do, Teddy, because in this society, when you say, that's I don't true. know, people sneer at it. People, you know, it, it, it's... Listen. Did, did you know in the corporate world saying, I don't know, will get you fired, but saying, I have a surefire plan. I'm going to tank this whole fucking company because I have no idea what I'm doing. That's the person who's going uh, to who's gonna get out with the with the golden parachute. Dude, well, saying I don't know is that. sneered at. And the thing is, is we need to embrace I don't know because at least then we can learn. You know what? That You are 100% right about that. I, I agree, love that. But all Good. I'm saying is there's value in striving to understand things. I have, I have not once in this conversation said, if you don't believe this, you are stupid, you are wrong. I agree. All I'm saying is this is an alternative to normal the theistic discussion. And it's interesting to me because I do think that there is something convincing in this argument and, but, but, about it, initial causes. But in this conversation, you've already said that you just define it as a thing that you don't know, but whatever it was that created the universe, that's what you call it. Um, you, you've thrown out things like omnipotence, which I think completely refutes your statement that you're just defining it as this thing that you don't know. No, um, that's just semantics. That's just, that's just semantics. Okay. If, this, if, it's, if it's an initial thing and it's the cause of everything, then yeah, it has to contain all that power. Okay. But let's just, get, let's just get beyond this. I think we both agree that there is value in saying, I don't know about these very fundamental questions because mm -hmm. anyone who says they do know has something wrong with them or they're trying to deceive people. Part, part of the problem with religion and two, that all I wanted to do is put out a controversial 
but cool argument that goes against the grain of, of normal theology. I That's it. I appreciate it, and I think that the more you investigate, um, the more I'm hoping you'll you'll start to stick to the methodology that that gets you there, and instead of what exactly that is, it, it kind of frees us up to question our beliefs. Um, while, while it's interesting, I don't think that it's um, number one. It's not showable. Number two, it uses special permission. It, it uses the argument from incredulity. Um, it shuts down um, exploration because, hey, what do you know? Therefore, it's true. Um, th this, is a, this is a bad argument. It doesn't shut down exploration because we just both admitted that we don't know about this, yet I made an attempt to strive to explain it. And I'm, I will readily admit there are a lot of problems with this argument. Right. And, Nonetheless, and, and, there and, is and, something and you would be And you would be that golden parachute person that I gave you in my analogy. Um, don't be that guy, Teddy. Don't be that guy that would rather give the wrong answer than no answer. I just said I would not, I don't, I'm just offering this for thought, for striving. I, Got it. And I'm not giving it out as an answer. Okay. Okay. Well, we're also talking with an audience. For those enough. of you watching at home, don't be that guy. Teddy? Don't be that guy. Teddy? Thank you for calling in. This was fun. Thank you. It, it was. Good stuff. Good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I think I do want to also clarify, when we say I don't know is a perfectly acceptable answer, we mean it's a perfectly acceptable answer for now. We're not saying that I don't know and therefore I'm going to give up searching or looking or investigating. It's not a lazy answer. It's, the nece it's a necessary answer to get us to that next step where we do start to know things. Exactly. Yeah. Um, you, you know, it's funny. When I was a kid... Um, I thought, well, we just know, you know, humanity has already figured everything out, you know. So when I was a kid, I would go to the library and I'd see these shelves and shelves and shelves of books. And I thought, anything that I want to know, if I just find the right book, I'll know the answer. Mm -hmm. And later on, when I learned that authors can be wrong, that they're just people, and that there are way more things than we, that we don't know than what we know, it was scary. It was really scary. Um, and yeah, you know, you don't get that comfort when, when you're, you have an explanation like that given to you. Um, but that discomfort moves us forward. Right.